Well, another day, another Marvel cartoon. It's been a while since I've been able to fully indulge myself with some of my all-time favorite Marvel cartoons, with of course relating to that of Spider-Man the new animated series and even Fantastic Four World's Greatest Heroes. Now the primary factor for those two cartoons is the fact that they only lasted for one whole individual season each. And even though each of those cartoons were planned to continue the series with a second season, they sadly weren't able to execute them due to them both being cancelled. But this time around, we're going to be diving into one of my all-time favorite Marvel Hero cartoons, which did actually end up lasting for two whole seasons, and also took the main character of the series in a completely new and unique direction which has never been seen before. The amount of love and recognition, as well as the overall fan base that this character has managed to garner over the past decade is nothing short of incredible. And while he has indeed had his fair share of standout moments throughout the entirety of that of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as some interesting videos, video game appearances, I do believe this one animated series is one of his best interpretations yet. And based on the hero in question, you know exactly which show I'm talking about. I am inevitable. That's right y'all, Iron Man Armored Adventures is truly a standout gem, and the intro that this show has is easily an unforgettable experience. Now crazy enough, this series actually debuted before the Marvel Cinematic Universe was actually a thing. Right off the heels of the massively financially successful and critically acclaimed Iron Man 1, which released all the way back in May of 2008, Iron Man Armored Adventures fully built off the Iron Man movie hype by debuting in November of the same year, but however, it did take the character in a completely new direction. While the MCU's version of Iron Man decided to go for a much more mature theme for the overall tone of the movie, as well as fully cementing Robert Downey Jr. as one of the most definitive casting choices to ever be put to screen, Armored Adventures decided to take a much different path. While they still did keep some matured themes within the show overall, they instead put Tony Stark and all the other supporting characters in a high school setting. Which, in retrospect, is actually a pretty funny decision, considering that there was another major superhero cartoon in 2008 which also followed a similar premise. Whatever you say, devil. Ow! <laughs> that was classic! Pepper, what was that for? Like you don't know. Pepper, shh. Don't you start, Rhodey, sitting over there flirting with her. Hey, how could you not tell me about her? How could you choose Whitney over me? Ah, I see. It all makes sense now. You're having a lover's spat. <sighs> But regardless of the two different settings that both the Iron Man movie and this show did feature, they still fully stayed true to the character of Tony Stark and the supporting characters as a whole. After almost losing his life in a plane crash that killed his father, Howard Stark, teenage prodigy Tony Stark, heir to the billion dollar corporation of Stark International, honors his dad's memory as the superhero Iron Man, his alter ego charged with protecting those who are less fortunate than him. With the help of his friends Jims Rhodes, who ends up becoming War Machine, and Pepper Potts, who also ends up becoming rescue, Tony Stark uses his suits of invincible armor and his technological inventions to take on extremely classic Iron Man foes. But again, reimagined in very unique ways which does differ from the source material but still stays classic to the villain at hand. This includes the Mandarin, which is my personal favorite interpretation of the villain within any form of Iron Man media, Ironmonger, Crimson Dynamo, Whiplash, the Living Laser, Blizzard, Ghost, Madam Mask, and much more. And while the creators of this show did have to juggle through a plethora of Iron Man characters and dive deep within the source material to use for certain episodes, I do believe it fully paid off in a very unique and intriguing way. And in my opinion, as a result, it managed to become one of the most encapsulating interpretations of Iron Man to ever be put to screen. Now while the animation wasn't anything to drop your jaw over, I still think that given the time of when it was made in 2008, it did manage to get the job 
job done. But alongside of that, the show does in fact do a sensational job of fully fleshing out each of the characters within very engaging writing segments and even character arcs that do continue throughout numerous episodes. For example, Tony is obviously young but intellectual, but also keeps a level head in serious situations. However, he is still trying to prove himself while he is still becoming Iron Man. And believe me, by the time the series begins with Season 1 and ends with Season 2, Tony is indeed a fully changed and evolved character, which I do fully appreciate as the armored Avenger we all know he can be. But of course, like all the major Marvel cartoons seem to do back in the late 2000s, this show sadly did end with a major cliffhanger involving the Mandarin trying to continue his search of the 10 Makuan rings. And alas, while this show was in talks to receive a third season with the script fully laid out, it was sadly cancelled due to the major production of the next Iron Man movie. Now, if you think that Armored Adventures is simply just a run-of-the-mill Iron Man cartoon, I would think that you would be sadly mistaken. There's certainly a lot more to this show than meets the eye, and I'll let my good buddy is amazing fully explain to you as to why that is. Never want to shrink from an honest challenge. Uh -huh. Hola, my fellow fellas and fellettes, here's is amazing. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If not, hopefully this cheers you up a little. When Evan asked me to do this video, I was a tiny bit divided. I love animation and superheroes, but I had honestly never watched this show, except for a few episodes when I was a kid. It never really caught my attention. In my opinion, it was, and still is, not that visually appealing as other shows from around the time. Armored Adventures uses a technique different to most Marvel animated shows, 3D CGI, which, as I said before, might end up having the designs looking a bit bland. But as we all know, looks are not everything. This Iron Man animated show dares. It dares to do something entirely different. We all know Tony Stark, right? Millionaire, playboy, philanthropist, great facial hair, psych! Guess again! We are introduced to something we had never seen before. <clears throat> as I said, never seen before. Iron Man as a teenager. Basically, until he turns 18, he isn't in control of his supposedly deceased father's company, so in the meantime he turns into Iron Man and tries to prevent whatever evil the current heads of the company are trying to do in his name, while also protecting the city in the process. Before going to the most interesting aspects of the show, in my opinion, I just want to add that this teenage Iron Man plot could have gone awful. But it didn't. It's incredibly well executed, the main trio feels unironically real, Tony, Rhodey and Pepper are good friends and you can tell that the three of them care about each other. A lot. There are certain characters that don't feel 100% real, but I wouldn't say they are bad. I believe that one of the most awesome things about it is how plot driven it is. The filler episodes are literally counted, most of them focus on the overarching plot and lead somewhere. I think one of the silliest one-shot episodes that didn't have much to do with the plot was one in which Tony, Pepper and Rhodey were trapped in their high school by a shallow student and her brother, who puts death traps everywhere and if Tony doesn't answer school subject questions correctly, his friends die. You know, casual. And then it is revealed that the student's brother was a robot that she built so she wouldn't be alone. These characters were already introduced in the first season, so it was kind of weird and came out of nowhere, but it was so silly and dumb, but still enjoyable somehow. I, I really liked that episode, even though it had nothing to do with the plot and it was so random. The thing is, I believe that there was a lot of missed potential here, as in the universe we were presented to. There isn't just Iron Man characters here. Black Panther, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Hulk, Shin Grey, Professor X and S.H.I.E.L.D. appear in the show. Captain America is being defrozen, Spider-Man, Matt Murdock, The Punisher and the Fantastic Four are also confirmed to exist. Can you imagine? This universe's future with Iron Man finally as an adult, completing his journey of becoming an adventurer and one of Earth's mightiest heroes. I seriously thought a lot about Spider-Man. This version of Iron Man shares a lot of aspects with the good old web slinger. Even his father figure told him this. We must constantly remind ourselves that power comes with the price of responsibility. In this universe, criminals are very afraid of Spidey, which might mean he has been around in the business for a while, which also means he might be older than Tony. Could you picture that? A reverse relationship to the one we got in the MCU, in which the older hero, who also started off as a teenager, gives advice to the young Tony. It would have been awesome to see. 
And yes, it is far away from the source material, but that doesn't make it bad, because it is so well executed, which is what many other adaptations lack. So yeah, I love this show. It is truly awesome, and I wish Marvel Animation would have kept doing stuff like this instead of their current projects. Thank you for having me on your show, E. Back to you. See you later, Killer Crocs. Get it? Because he's an alligator? Okay, bye. <laughs> How about that? To build off of his amazing's points, Iron Man Armored Adventures did a spectacular job of fully humanizing the characters by giving them much more relatable problems than what we would normally see from an Iron Man cartoon. While we still see some really cool spectacles throughout the series like Iron Man going into space or even him fighting a giant foe like Fing Fang Foom, they still manage to put the overall characters in a grounded setting. This provides the show with a fully well-rounded blend of superhero spectacle alongside of a much more down-to-earth storyline. This is what truly separates good superhero storytelling within shows like Spectacular Spider-Man, Fantastic Four World's Greatest Heroes, and Iron Man Armored Adventures from the much more recent and rather blasé superhero cartoons that we currently have like that of Marvel Spider-Man and Avengers Assemble. So not only did this cartoon prioritize its much more layered narrative compared to everything else, but it also featured a lot of fan service that would certainly make a plethora of Iron Man fans extremely happy. This mainly includes an animation style which tries to pay tribute to certain aspects of the comic books, as well as including a variety of Iron Man armors that we do see Tony don throughout the show. But to further dive deeper into those aspects a bit further, I do want to hand it off to one of my buddies of Mikhail to provide his thoughts on those subject matters. And tell him to suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. Hi everyone, it's Mikhail Kanlate here. Um, before I begin, I just want to thank Evan very much uh, for this opportunity. It's really awesome to talk uh, with someone uh, about a show that I really appreciate and when they appreciate it just as much as I do. So to me this is a great opportunity and a chance to work with you Evan is really really awesome. So thank you again. And without further ado, I guess I'll get started. First of all, the choice to make it um, 3D like CGI is really good and in my opinion it's a great improvement upon uh, the uh, Spider-Man the new animated series. Uh, that one also had 3G, 3D CGI. It was really cool to look at, it was amazing, and I feel like they did it a little better, at least visually and like technology-wise, uh, for Armored Adventures. Um, it's, it's really cool to look at, the cinematography is pretty great, like the shots, and all the character models look phenomenal, like whether it's just a normal human or it's a creature, someone in armor. Uh, the buildings in New York looks really good. They just captured everything really well within the 3D uh, CGI technology and it's really awesome to look at and the textures and all that. that. That I found really, really cool. I loved like the armors and the way they were integrated uh, and stuff like that. Like I just loved like the suit ups for the armor. They were animated so se seamlessly. It almost looks like impossible, even for like sometimes the MCU, even though there are more OP scenes in there. But like just the way, for example, like the armor is put into a backpack, like a backpack that'll just that just looks like a normal school backpack, for example, that has um, anti-gravity tech, so it doesn't weigh very much. Like and the fact that he just presses a button, and then the entire armor from his back goes onto him around. Whether he's running like up a hill downstairs, for example or running or if he's staying still goes into a t-pose it always like seam seamlessly attaches itself to him and it's so visually pleasing to look at but in season two when um tony gets extremis he can just call the armor in pieces and they will just fly towards him just like that and again just seeing that is awesome to see all the different armors like their designs what they did like the arctic armor was just in one episode but seeing it's like um, like anti sub zero capacity, like technology with the flamethrowers and the armor like heating up. I love the space armor, like black, no like mouth type of design on the mask with the boosters, like the extra jetpacks. The way Tony really made every single armor really like for its own use, like it didn't, they didn't look uh, repetitive from the others, they all had their unique traits really cool especially the hulkbuster armor as well it looked much more menacing like all the tech that his um foes use are really really cool to see and especially when at some point in season two when his technology is used against him when they steal his tech and then they make different 
uh, Iron Man armor with different um, abilities and extra, um, yeah, extra abilities and technology. Uh, super interesting to see Tony's intellect and fight off that tech. But again, the modern take on this is really good. Seeing all the different technology really modernizes it and makes it more enjoyable to watch. I love this series because many episodes are incredibly unique. One of my favorite episodes, especially from season two. Season two has very great episodes. All the best people are mad. Control, alt, delete. Those are so interesting to see. I think control, alt, delete is one of my all-time favorite episodes because like just the way Tony wakes up, he has no friends. He knows, like the people he knows well don't know him. He has no place to stay. Like it's a completely different world. And until the very end, you, you're really guessing a lot. It's, it's a really great episode. And I love, love how they put it all together. And the like the all the best people are mad episode, also one of my favorites. Because it's really more about Tony here, and he really needs to use it, needs to use his intellect, even though he's really tired in that episode, and remember all this stuff. And it's really cool to see because Tony is supposedly a really, really good genius in like robotics, technology, and everything. But in history and all that stuff, he struggles a lot. And seeing like all the others who are in danger, like his classmates who are in danger in that episode, really thank him and appreciate them more for saving their life. All the Marvel characters shown, villains, references, like other heroes, Black Panther, Nick Fury, Hulk, seeing them all and also how they unite at the end of the series, really cool and satisfying. And like, again, all their designs are cool. And I love the villains. The villains in this series, some of them may be a bit throwaways, seeing what they have up their sleeve. It always challenges Tony and it's interesting to see how he um, goes go, goes about the situation. It's really interesting to revisit this series, like revisit some episodes or the whole series, wait a little bit, watch other stuff, and revisit it again. It's it's honestly really fun, and the nostalgia you get if you haven't visited it in a while, really really satisfying. And uh, yeah, guys, if you haven't checked out the series, well, what are you waiting for? Stop the video, check it out right now. But anyways, um, thank you very much, Evan. I'll let Evan get back to the video now. And uh, I really like the like this series, man. And hopefully, like as the future goes on, they will make more great written, like fantastically written stories like this. And uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you next time. Enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks for listening to me, guys. Peace out. In the end, everyone, I thoroughly believe that Iron Man Armored Adventures is an absolute love letter to the character at hand, and I definitely would recommend this series for anyone who have may not seen it yet. It it truly showcases Iron Man in some pretty unique and intriguing ways, all while trying to stay true to the source material at hand, but also innovating at the same time. But most importantly, I definitely think that this series does in fact do justice to the character of Iron Man as a whole, and above all else, I certainly think that's what matters most. And with all that said everyone, that was our review of Iron Man Armored Adventures, and huge thank you to his amazing and Mikhail Conlate for actually participating in this review as well. This video has certainly been a long long time coming, and I certainly couldn't have done it without the help of those two amazing individuals. So please go follow them on social media and subscribe to their YouTube channels to support them as much as you can, because I know for a fact that they definitely deserve it. And with all that said everyone, thank you all so much for watching, stay merry Marvelites, let me know in the comments section down below if there's any other Marvel cartoon you would like to see me review in the future, but until that time comes, peace out. You're ruining my moment. I'm gonna stay ahead of the bad guys, save lives, and protect my friends. Pretty awesome, huh?